President Trump enraged coastal America yesterday when he retweeted three videos being circulated by a woman called Jada Franson, deputy leader of a Britain First, it's a nationalist group in the UK. Trump was criticized also by the British Prime Minister, Theresa May. The press in both countries declared him a fascist or worse. This morning, the president started his day by promoting anti-Muslim fascist propaganda, retweeting videos posted by the leader of a British hate group called Britain First. Jada Franson. She is known in the UK for spreading anti-Muslim and racist videos. There's so many levels of this that are so ridiculous. The president retweeting someone who was arrested, a hate speech uh, person. Today, the president of the United States once again embraced the message of racist, bigoted bullies. <laughs> Subtle. Of course, there's nothing actually fascist about retweeting a video, but there is creeping fascism out there. It's the steady death of free speech in the West. Jada Franson has repeatedly been punished by British authorities for saying what she thinks out loud. That used to be legal. She's been banned from at least one English city for handing out anti-Islamic literature there on the grounds that her opinion caused, quote, community tension. She's been banned from any mosque in England or Wales for three years. She was fined more than $2,000 for saying that Muslim men commit high numbers of rape in the West. Recently, she was arrested for a speech she gave in Belfast in August. It's possible she could face charges and prison time for speaking. Just to be clear, none of that behavior was violent. Franson is being targeted by authorities because her views are unpopular. Now, you'd think this would horrify reporters here in the U.S. You'd think they would have an interest in defending free speech, but no. Instead, as you just heard, they are citing her arrest as evidence that her views ought to be suppressed. She is, quote, a hate speech person. She ought to shut up and disappear. Guardians of the First Amendment cheering on its destruction. That is terrifying, but it's not confined to Britain. Throughout the UK and Western Europe, and in Canada too, by the way, citizens have been arrested for expressing political views the authorities don't like. You didn't think that could happen, but it is happening. Last June, for example, we could give you many, German police raided dozens of homes in a coordinated effort to stamp out offensive posts on social media. The civilization that gave us free speech, the West, has suspended the concept because it conflicts with the diversity agenda. That seems like maybe the real story here. Kasim Rashid is national spokesman for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Rashid, thanks for coming up. Thanks for having me, Tucker. How are you? So, great. So one thing I'm not going to do is get in a position to argue about the content mm -hmm. of these videos mm -hmm. because I... They're uh, deplorable. It's, it's ridiculous. Right, well, you, I mean, you don't like them. Yeah, that, 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 that's fake, fine. It, you know, uh, whatever. violence. It's, it's nonsense, yeah. Right. I mean, they're ugly, uh, whether they're real or not. That they seem real. But look, I, I'm not an expert on I mean, the in president's video. finding a new way to embarrass himself. Here's what I'm an expert on. Day. I'm an expert on the legacy of Western civilization. Sure. And its main legacy is the freedom of speech. You get to say what you think is true, period. And that's not the case in Europe. In Canada, as you know, thanks in right. part to pressure from Muslim groups. No, I don't think that's true. Well, actually, 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 it's literally true, and it is now a crime, as you're seeing in the cases I just mm -hmm. mentioned, to offend people. It's literally a crime in the UK to offend people, to alarm or distress. That's the Public Order Act, 1994. You can go to jail for that. Sure. Will you support that? I support free speech. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community, uh, the Muslims who believe in the Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, we're a worldwide Muslim community. We're in over 200 nations worldwide. And we spread because of free speech, because of free exchange of ideas. So believe me, when I say we believe in free speech, we're not just saying it as a figure of speech. We've benefited from it on a worldwide scale. Our community members are persecuted horribly in countries like Pakistan simply because we want to express Well, then you are, drawing the right, you are drawing the right lesson from your experience. Absolutely. I applaud you for that. But I wonder if you would raise a voice in defense of a woman I'm sure you despise, the woman whose videos mm -hmm. Trump retweeted yesterday. She's facing apparently jail time for saying things the authorities don't like. Well, Should she be facing jail well, for Well, I think if people want to criticize Islam, by all means, go ahead. I have no problem with that. If people can criticize Islam to my face, and they can do it uh, all day and every day. That's not the issue here. The issue here is we have a uh, situation around the world where, for example, in the United States, hate crimes are at a 20-year high against Muslims. Right. In a country but like... Is, but is expressing dislike of a religion or of a no, person or of wrong, an idea... nothing wrong with expressing but, dislike. But, but in Europe, say, that yeah. qualifies as a hate crime. I'll read you the statute publicly. No, no, I, I read the statute. I, I know. What, yeah, there are a couple what, of them. But what we saw here was a woman who claimed that these are Muslim migrants coming up and beating up a poor Dutch boy, inciting racial tensions, inciting violence. So, what well, I don't well, want to well, do... Wait, 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 hold on. I don't want to do is Wait, hold on. So, then, so you are actually... Because I want to pin you down. I want you yeah. to be slippery with me. No, no, no. So you're saying that she's inciting violence, so she is guilty of a crime. 
What I'm saying is that when you promote deliberate false information against all, an already marginalized minority, just like somebody promoting oh, myths so about she Jews, should be charged. So you're actually not for free speech. I'm oh, I'm I, totally I for almost free fell speech. for that for a second. I'm for free speech. No, but what she's saying is here's a video of something. Maybe she's wrong in the way she describes it, but you're saying what she did is a crime. No, no. What I'm saying is that when somebody promotes Nazi ideology in a country where Nazis have mass murdered millions of people, I can't defend that. Maybe you can defend that. Not, Maybe I'm other not, people I'm can not defend that. No, no, but you're totally missing it. And I, I thought you understood the. The concept of free speech. No, no, I, I do you don't have to endorse speech. an idea to believe that people ought to right. have a right to express right. it. And I think we agree on that. What well, I don't why, agree you, with... why are you accusing me of having Nazi views when I'm just defending I'm not, free speech? I, I, I don't okay. You. So, but really quick, we're almost out of time. I just want to get to the bottom of this. Do you think this woman should face charges? Simple. For promoting violence, yes. If it's just criticizing Islam, no. Nobody should face... But she's not promoting violence. She's right. showing a video you don't like. I'm, she's promoting Nazi ideology. He, oh, okay. So you're radio. not for free speech. I'm sorry. I, I almost fell for the I'm for free speech. Nazi, oh, okay. So that's not allowed. Man. All right. What you call Nazis well, should be banned. I mean, I, 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 I like my Jewish friends. I don't want them to be killed by Nazis. I don't. I, I hate the Nazis. But right, people so have a right to say, Nazis, not defending the Nazis. Well, I'm defending speech. Thing. No, we're not, because you're opposed to free speech, I'm and I'm glad I got it out of you. I'm opposed to Nazis. Oh, right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Big Nazi. Okay. Michael Flynn promised full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yes! Leaving aside that Joy Behar obviously wanted to see impeachment proceedings begin. That's fine, whatever you're into. Uh, the fact of the matter is it wasn't quite as it was presented initially with the ABC report making you think that there were these secret conversations going on with the Russians prior to the election. ABC later put out a correction to that stating, and I quote, uh, Flynn prepared to testify the president-elect Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians during the transition, initially as a way to work together to fight ISIS in Syria, Confidant now says. Now, that's a very big difference, folks. And I only say that because uh, it's after Donald Trump has been elected president of the United States. So again, it, it isn't so sinister where you're talking about possible collusion to get him elected president of the United States. It's a big difference. And the joke could be on Joy Behar here, but on many others who were interpreting what happened uh, with the general as a sign that we've got, uh, and they were saying this, Watergate. We might very well have something like that, but we're certainly a long way from that now. So you know our policy here when we go through this, everyone calm down, don't make a general statement. Try to tick off both sides. I think we've done that very, very well. What well, do you think well, about Brian Ross and ABC News? I mean, we've been getting into it this morning. He's now been suspended, and rightly so, and he's accepting responsibility. But look, on Friday, how do you dial this back? The impact where he reports falsely uh, that candidate Trump directed General Flynn to reach out to the Russians and that this may have led to con uh, collusion and that this may then basically lead to impeachment, which leads the markets to crash. They correct it after the markets have closed and after the media narrative governor has been set. Well, ABC first tried to do a, what they called a clarification and then they finally realized they'd blown it and they came out with a full blown correction Then they suspended Brian Ross, none of which uh, at all surprises me. Having been the object of Brian Ross's so-called investigative approach to journalism, uh, I found him to be one of the most recklessly dishonest journalists I've ever dealt with. And that's saying a lot because I've dealt with a few. What do you mean by that? Is it, no, you know, anonymous sources? I mean, what's his approach? Well, his approach is that he has a story that he wants to prove, and then he goes about and he just pr makes up some stuff, and then he gets sources that are, for the most part, impeachable sources, and then he puts together, and then he does an ambush interview where he just continues to hammer you after the same question over and over. It was so bad in one particular case where he was uh, going after me that the crew, normally, who are agnostic about the content of the news, when it was all over, they said, my gosh, what's that guy got against you? It was that kind of uh, moment. And it was ridiculous. He was totally wrong on the facts. This has been the same Brian Ross that tried to attach the Aurora, Colorado shooter to the right. Tea Party. Totally unfounded. Uh, I, I mean, I think Brian Ross has been unmasked as a person who has his own agenda, but it's not truth.